Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. I'm Jason Fitz. L. Duncan sitting next to me. We are sitting in for the man, the myth, the legend himself. Triple eight, say ESPN, eight, 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 seven, two, nine, three, seven, seven, six. And you know, it's going to be a crazy day when you get a breaking Woj bomb right before you go to air. Woj just told us that this is the quote. This is the tweet. I'm going to read you the tweet because we're, we're disagreeing on how to, yeah, we're how to, to interpret it. The tweet from Woj that came out just a couple of minutes ago in the aftermath of left knee surgery. Boston Celtics all-star guard Kyrie Irving will miss the rest of the regular season and playoffs. League sources told ESPN. L. Duncan, I read this as the rest of the regular season and playoffs means he gone. Which, if he's gone, means the the yellow brick road that leads to the NBA Finals is just sort of being, it's paved at this point for LeBron. Yeah, which I kind of believed anyway. Oh. I didn't. I mean, I did. I did. I, listen, look at all the things that have happened to the Cavs, and they're still like the best team in the East despite all of it. Um, but this is huge, and here's how I read it. Because again, words matter, and we are trying to get some clarity for you because this just came down, and words matter. I read regular season and playoffs, meaning some of the playoffs, because if it was a season ender, then why wouldn't Woj say he's done for the season? He's out. It's a wrap. Just like they did with Gordon Hayward. Not coming back this season. Definitively. Decisively. He's done. This seems like a, some playoffs, should they make it beyond the first or second round, he could come back. See, but it follows, if we're gonna, <laughs> we're like having English 101 here. Uh, it follows, miss the rest of, of the regular seasons and, and playoffs. He doesn't reset the rest of regular season, and the rest playoffs. of the regular season and some playoffs. Why wouldn't he say his season's done? I don't know. Season ending. Well, it's Woj, over. Woj seems dramatic. I mean, there's a moment here, like maybe Woj also seems like he might be like a sort of an awkward texter sometimes. And so this feels like maybe an awkward text from Woj. Like, like he, he 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 thought it was clear. It's not clear, and it's chaos. And and really, I blame myself. Okay, okay? Why? Uh, because L, I went all in about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, on Spain and Fitz, which uh, shamelessly you can hear six to nine p on ESPN Radio. I went all in, and I said, look, this conversation about the East and and you know the Cavs are just going to put it together. No, we're overanalyzing it. The fact is, the Cavs aren't the best team in the East anymore, and they're not going to the finals. And yep. it's time to stop mm-hmm. waffling on it every two or three games. It's time to just make a statement. So I made mine, and then Joel Embiid uh, he gone, and now Kyrie he Irving he gone. he gone, and I'm looking at it saying the basketball gods are just snarkily laughing at me right now because it's alarming to see how. The East, which I think has been much better than people want to give it credit for this year. The East has been exciting and is building towards being very exciting. And now all of a sudden this happens. And yet again, you just look at it and say, well, it's LeBron's. I wasn't buying any of this. It is always LeBron. And much like Tom Brady, right? Until he proves otherwise, it is always his to lose. Because again, yes, I will give you this, that more than anything else, it was not simply hyperbole like Latin years past where we say, what's wrong with LeBron? And it's December. There were issues at a time where there's not supposed to be issues, right? Coming out of the all-star break is when you're supposed to be hitting your stride, and it was a brand new team that was not. But despite all of that, I don't believe in Toronto in the playoffs until they prove otherwise. I'm sorry. They always disappear. You watch their game the other night between the Cavs and Toronto, and you go, good God, they can't stop LeBron. They just can't stop him. And then, of course, with Kyrie being injured, no Gordon Hayward. I never believed that it was anybody but Cleveland's to lose anyway. I just think that now this impacts where the Celtics will even make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, you're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Jason Fitz, L. Duncan sitting in for the man. Remember, to win in basketball, you got to play great coverage, right? And with Straight Talk Wireless, you know you're getting great coverage because they use the exact same 4G LTE towers as the big carriers. But... For a lot, a lot less straight talk wireless only at Walmart. Refer to terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. And part of this also now I'm sitting here feeling, uh, and this is crazy to say given the sports year they've had, but I feel bummed for Philly 
I mean, you, you continue to look at this and, and you walk, you look at the opportunity. And I think that's the, the thing that really has hit me throughout the course of the season is that the East felt like it was more of an open door than I think most of us presumed it would be, especially with the Hayward injury early on. It's sort of in many of our minds, it eliminated the Celtics from the conversation. Right. And then we've seen a Cavs team that at times has been good and at times it's just been dreadful and so you look at it and say hey there is this cracked door there's this cracked door and why not philly who's played particularly well should be noted they won last night for the first time since 1990 they've won 12 straight games but none of us believe in it because there's no mb well it, and that too but even with mb like Honestly, you thought that the Sixers were going to make a real Why run not? for you, this? You are... I'm not. I'm, what I'm saying is is that it's a very... Why we can't have nice listen, things? Listen, it's no. It's like if you're the Sixers and you're trusting the process and making the playoffs and winning a, a round of the playoffs, that is a win for your season. So I just think that we gave it a little bit too much hype and a little bit too much fangirling over the prospect of Embiid. We want so desperately for there to be some real competition in the East that we're propping people up that shouldn't be propped up yet. Like, they didn't have... This team was not going to make a real run at this. Let's be honest. I mean, like, let's you, be honest. You, no, no, like, I, I'm, I'm no, looking away I think from a, you for a the win for the Sixers this. was making it to the second round. Like, let's, you know, let's stop with this. And now Embiid's gone. So what? It's going to be devastating. No, it isn't. This, in my mind, this was always going to come down to the Celtics and the Cavs. And now it will come down to someone else. Maybe it could have been the Sixers at the time. But a couple of weeks ago when we found out about this Embiid stuff, it didn't change my mind and that the Sixers were never going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. I, I, I do. I don't even know you right now. By the way, we are getting confirmation we have heard through SportsCenter. Kyrie, he's done for okay, the year. Okay, so the season's over. Out. His season is over. So if you are the Celtics fan, if you're a Celtics fan at this point, you, the only thing I can say is raise a beer, have a drink, and say, hey, what might have been? It's still been a tremendous season given all the injuries. Can I offer a couple of glimpses, like bright spots for Celtics fans? And I'm going to fan nerd out here with some numbers. Oh, yes. I love it when you fan nerd out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to numbers this thing okay. and offer some bright spots for why this might still be competitive. Okay, so the Celtics with Kyrie on the court have played 1,900 minutes. They've played 1,800 without him. So it's not like they're not used to playing without him. With that being said, is their offense markedly worse when he's not there? Yes, but their defense is better. You know Kyrie's never been known for a defensive guy. Their defense is better. And what is it that they always say? What's the narrative in the playoffs, right? Defense wins championships. So at the very least, you could get through the first round with that Kyrie Irving. You can. You can get through the first round without Kyrie Irving, which, again, is still a win. I think there are some bright spots because, again, it is the East, and you have a lot of good at the top and a lot of bad at the bottom or fighting um, at the bottom to kind of be mediocre at that. Uh, but in terms of, like, making the Eastern Conference Finals or going beyond that, they were never going to do that anyway. Do you look at – well, yeah, I, I, you know what, Will – I don't know. This has been a difficult year for Boston, and I'll, I'll look back at it this way. Oh, you know, boo-hoo. For me, okay, I remember for me as a, a fan of my beloved Oakland Raiders, uh, I remember a couple of years ago when the Raiders looked great, but I knew that they just weren't as good as the Patriots, and Derek Carr got hurt near the end of the regular season and destroyed the shot at a Super Bowl. I looked at it, and I said, you know what? The good the good news is it takes all the stress away. I could just sort of raise a beer sure. and say, hey, good thing I didn't have to watch Carr lose uh, to the Patriots. So, like, I found a positive in it. Maybe uh, Celtics fans at this point can find a positive in it. I, I'm not so sure. Uh, right now, you mentioned the bottom of the Eastern Conference, and obviously Miami, Washington, Milwaukee are all sort of battling it out somewhere between the 6th and the 8th seed, uh, depending on the day and depending how things go. I don't know that I love Boston versus Milwaukee without Kyrie. I don't love Boston versus the the Bucks there um, at all, but just because that's because I think Giannis is a matchup nightmare anyway. So you'll have to go you know, to the tat there in terms of offensive um, abilities, which they don't have. Like, I'm sorry, but if you have to start Terry Rozier there, um, then you're not going to be able to hang. And and Boston looked, I mean, Boston and Toronto last night both looked particularly dreadful. Sure. I mean, it was a particular the worst uh, the worst output offensively for the Celtics all season last night against Toronto. Toronto gets the win in a game that was a big deal for both of them. Uh, but to your point, I kept watching it last night, thinking if this is the best. If this is the best the East has to offer, whew, it just looks painful. And this it, is always the best the East has to offer. Fitz, welcome oh, to it. Come on, but yes. let, let's be honest. Like, okay, we just presume Toronto's going to stink because the advanced metrics say, as Ryan Rosillo has told me a million times, and as you've heard on his podcast many times, I'm sure, uh, the, the advanced metrics say that Toronto folds in the playoffs and they're terrible. Fine. 
but Boston, at, without the injuries, without the injuries, you could look at it and say there was a lot of hope for Boston looking at how good they've been. They could have been great. Philadelphia, I still think, is better than you're giving them credit for because you are Nancy Naysayer today. No, I think they're a solid team. But I just don't – I disagree with you that they were even with the beat that they were going to contend – for the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't even So know. you don't think that they're the fourth or fifth best team? Do you think they're the fourth or fifth best team in the East? Philadelphia? Yes. With with Embiid? Yes. Uh, I think they're they're better than that. Where do you think they are? I think that with Embiid, I think they could have beat Cleveland. I'll just say it. I know you guys are going to blow okay. me up. All right. I'm sorry okay, I said it. Fitz. I'm sorry You're I said it. You're being a prisoner of I'm the moment. I'm not being a prisoner of you the moment. You must have had a cheesesteak or something for lunch. I and didn't now have a cheesesteak, and right. that's the problem. Okay. Now, she's L. Duncan. I'm Jason Fitz. It's the Stephen A. Show on ESPN Radio. I'm just saying that Philadelphia has been a matchup nightmare for Cleveland this year. Why not? Why not? We're, you know, Ben Simmons has played incredibly well, right? Yeah. Joel Embiid has been fantastic. And if Mark L. Fultz could stop hurting himself and everyone around yeah, him, and stop hurting maybe, everyone on the maybe, team. maybe there's hope. I, I'm not buying into the Cleveland hype. I, I'll buy into the LeBron hype all day long because LeBron's amazing, incredible. And, and I have to say this loudly because you guys hate on me every time I say something negative about LeBron. I think LeBron's the greatest NBA player of all time. I would take LeBron in a great NBA player draft over Michael Jordan. That being said, I don't think Cleveland is good enough to win. I don't think I to win it all or win the East. Well, now they're good enough to win the East because nobody's playing. Everybody's gone. I'm angry about that. Not to win it all. I just though. think it's adorable that you're putting so much stock into regular season records. Like you think that it means something because the Sixers beat them a couple of times in the regular season. I, I, mean, I just think it's, it, but it's, it's crazy to think that just. The Spurs dominate the Warriors in the regular season. How does that work out in the playoffs? Okay, but let's be honest. The Rockets. You're taking a brand in the Cavs and you're extrapolating forward that they'll do what they've done before when it's a bunch of different guys that weren't a part of that doing, doing any it's of that. It's not before. about the bunch of different guys. The one consistent is LeBron. It takes a whole team to win an NBA championship. All right. Duncan. Uh, she's L. Duncan. I'm Jason Fitz. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Uh, we'll continue to keep you updated, obviously, on the Kyrie news as we get more, and, and Mommy and Daddy will continue to fight here. Uh, but there's one thing we can agree on today that, uh-huh. that's key. We can agree on the fact that selfishly, we need Tiger. Oh, we need him. You, you and I, Tiger baby, uh, and I will stand up at the rooftops and always sort of proclaim the things that I'm passionate about and the things that I don't know a ton about, the things that I love to watch, and the things that I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't find myself typically sitting around on a, a, any weekend saying, "Ooh, golf is on." Not ever. I'm not that guy. Not in Anne fact, one. I don't think I've ever found myself in my life saying, "Ooh, golf is on." To this point, I, I I've told this story before, but not not to you. I was uh, I was talking to somebody last year uh, mm-hmm. when I was still in Nashville and I was doing local radio and they said you know what you don't you just don't get the Masters because you have to appreciate it you need to go to Augusta sure and I was like okay maybe that's true during the break I got two texts from two of my buddies that, from different tours uh, from my life as a musician both saying hey dude we've been to Augusta you've actually walked Augusta we've played the 18th hole at Augusta as a band <laughs> you didn't remember I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. So that oh, wow. shows you my level of, of how impactful uh, that show. Yeah, Augusta was a golf course. We played a lot of them. I'm sorry, not played. I should say we played music on a lot of golf courses. It's not uncommon to do private events where they set a stage up on the 18th hole and you play. So yes, and I I found out later on that I had been offered the opportunity to actually play Augusta that day or, or the day before and on, you said on those. No. Days. And I said no. I gave it to one of the guys that are big golfers. Like why would I take that slot? That's true. That's not like I'm a nice guy. Yeah. So I say all of that to sort of couch the fact that frankly, L, uh, the Masters would not be something I'd be super stoked about. But I am because we got some Tiger. Because we have Tiger Woods, who by the way, like immediately being the man of the people, just shanked one right into the crowd. <laughs> I mean, all the hype, like it was, it was, I mean, it couldn't have happened any better. It's like all the hype, all the ratings, people paying attention, people care, people pulling it up on the website or looking at it at work and, you know, foregoing picking up their children from school just to see Tiger back in Augusta for the first time in three years. And then he literally just puts one right in the crowd. It's amazing. I think he's like bogeyed a couple of holes, birdied one. Which doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot to me, but I hear that's bad. <laughs> I think he's plus one or something. But, but here's the interesting thing about that, uh, you know, because I, I was having a discussion yesterday with some smart golf people, and uh, they, they were telling me, hey, Tiger's already won because we're talking about the Masters and we're talking about this event with so much uh, with so much hype and because everybody's so into it. But it's not that simple to me. There has to be a continuation of this because everybody's all in as long as Tiger's in. When Tiger's out, I mean, let's face it, golf guy, 
uh, likes to yell at me all the time and say, you know what, me golf too. golf is bigger than Tiger Woods. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, you're so much young talent, and you guys are bandwagon. Self admittedly, Fitz, I'm a total bandwagon fan. I'm so tired of people adding me like you're the worst kind of fan. I'm no kind of fan. That's the point, is that, like, Tiger's the only person over the last few weeks that could have you turn off March Madness to watch golf on a Sunday. But I agree with you in that it doesn't really matter on Thursday and Friday. If Tiger doesn't make the weekend, if he doesn't make the cut, this was all for naught. Great ratings on Thursday and Friday matter little. On Sunday, when there's nothing to do and there's nothing going on and we're about to, you know, embark on, like, the last two games of the NBA season, I want to see Tiger in red on Sunday at Augusta. That's what we all want. Uh, to that point, it, I would always say to golf guy, it, tell me that we got Jordan Spieth versus Roy McIlroy uh, in, in some sort of a final playoff. Tell me we get Sergio versus Dustin Johnson in some sort of playoff at the end. Yawn. I mean, it's great uh, yeah, for golf guy. Care. It's great for golf guy. We get Tiger versus anybody, and it's the only thing that'll be on in every single bar. Of it's course. the only conversation that will be happening everywhere. And the fact is, like, I, I think there's a moment here where golf guy needs to embrace it because there's a huge. Huge opportunity for golf here. I will buy uh, that there's a lot of young talent. There's a lot of young American talent. There's a lot. Uh, uh, there are young players with dynamic personalities, which for me as a non-golf guy has been, it's been interesting and fun to watch sort of the growth of Jordan Spieth, the personality. Uh, those guys are going to get a lot of exposure just because people are paying attention to Tiger. But in order for that to continue, Tiger has to continue to play at a highly relevant uh, level through the duration of this tournament, through the duration of the weekend. It can't just be one day. He can't fall off after Saturday either. He's got to be relevant through the process for golf to get the most win out of it. So golf guy shouldn't be yelling at me. Golf guy today, that even the golf guy that doesn't love the amount of attention we give Tiger, needs to be rooting for Tiger so much that we get the opportunity, all of us, to to be introduced to more of the young guys. They can all be exposed that way. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. But what's been really interesting is all of these people that have been saying, um, I saw you playing that over in your Good for the gander, good for the goose. I didn't know it was good for the goose, good for the gander. Yeah, it's good for the goose, good for the gander. I'd always heard the opposite. Yeah, well, you know, I like to twist things up a little bit. Sorry, I threw you off your game. No, you didn't at all. In fact, I feel like it's always been known as good for the goose is good for the gander. And I think Fitz just made that up. And I'm I'm confident Twitter will let us know. Um, But with that being said, I think I think what I found really interesting over the last couple weeks is like how many of the guys on the tour themselves are like, I find myself for some reason, rooting for Tiger more than I've ever rooted for Tiger before. Like, in particular, right now, because of what the Masters means to Tiger and his legacy. Like, you've had Phil Mickelson saying, like, I am, I mean, I'm, I am I hope to be in contention in this thing, and I just want Tiger to do so well, all of them. Like, it's not, whereas before, right, when Tiger was at his fever pitch, it was like no one wanted to be in his pairing. It just meant this circus, and it went thin, and it, there was a good and a bad that came along with Tiger. And now everyone, everybody, from, like, the dude that's selling the pimento sandwiches at Augusta National uh, to the, you know, analysts themselves. They want Tiger to win. Do they actually have pimento sandwiches at you Augusta? You didn't know that's a thing, boo? I didn't know. Oh, that's a, they, that's their thing. What, they, like, is it special bread or yeah, something? Yeah, no. They, it, like, that's the Augusta National. That's the Masters thing. It's like there's a whole thing about how many pimento, pimento cheese sandwich. sandwiches. Yeah. I will be honest. Like, so that's one of the things that my wife really introduced me to years ago. I was like, she was like, you want a pimento cheese sandwich? And I was like, no, I like meat on a sandwich like it requires meat and then i had pimento cheese and i was like this is actually a delight and now i find myself you know sitting alone in bristol because she hasn't made the move yet and uh, eating pimento sadly out of my no 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 no, but i do love pimento cheese (laughs) that got dark very quickly Uh, is it special she's coming to bristol just give it time uh is there is there special bread on on said pimento i don't know it's just like a huge indelible part of the masters so you just it's, threw pimento it's cheese like 20 dollars. no will someone back me up onto it i feel like there's so many moments here already where i feel like fitz is trying to make me feel stupid no. and make me question these things that i know to be true and pimento cheese sandwiches right are as indelible with the masters as um no, and, and, the waspy crowd that's watching it <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, L, it's impossible to make you, uh, to make you feel or look stupid at all. No, that's you, not true. You're brilliant. Uh, you uh, are blowing my mind today. That's true. what's happening. Uh, but I, I do think to go back to a, a reasonable point, uh, what, what, when all the golfers are talking about, all of them talking about, man, this is great. Love it for Tiger. This is fantastic. I think there's some sincerity there because frankly, the more they're talking about Tiger, the less they're talking about you. And, and a piece of this we have to remember is golf is such an individual sport. It, uh, ultimately, 
they're not competing against Tiger. They're competing against themselves to have the best possible round they can. So the less people are asking them about their things, the less people are getting in their heads, the less people are sort of going after these guys about whatever. Uh, and the more they can deflect to Tiger, the more pressure, frankly, it puts on Tiger and the less pressure that they have on themselves. It allows them to essentially play free, which I think is a huge uh, added bonus. I'll be interested to see if uh, if some of the top golfers have a better Masters because of it. Fitz, I stopped listening to you the second that Dominique Foxworth tweeted at me. You're right, L. Duncan. Goose is first. Thanks, Fox. Thank wow. you. Thanks. Thanks. I knew it. I mean, I already knew, but thank you so much for backing me up and yet again proving that I am right. Um, you're going to get a lot of that throughout this show for the next two hours as myself, L. Duncan, and Jason Fitz fill in for Stephen A. Smith, where I'm right, uh-huh. okay, and you are wrong. And if I feel like I'm right, I'm going to hammer that point home until you just give up and give it to me. I'm a married man. I'm used to it. <laughs> Tiger is plus one through nine, by the way. It should also be noted Dominique Foxworth has never tweeted me, so I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Fox. That's Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Uh, guys, it's time to freshen up your bathroom. I can speak to this, all right? You, you got to have... Uh-oh. The bathroom's got to be clean, all right? And the best way to freshen up your bathroom is with high-quality products in general from Dollar Shave Club. I am addicted, by the way, to new razors. That's a, that's a problem for me. Seriously, I get an amazing high-quality shave using my Dollar Shave Club ex- executive razor along with their Dr. Carver's shave butter, but they also have shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, everything. So clean up your bathroom and your daily routine. Join Dollar Shave Club today. For just five bucks with free shipping, you'll get the six-blade executive razor plus trial sizes of shea butter, body cleanser, and one wipe Charlie's. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash Stephen A. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Stephen A. I'm going to learn to read before uh, before the Rob, we got to get your pimento sandwich. I know. I just get that flustered over. Like I've always said, that's the most baller thing when you constantly have a new razor because I'm telling you, shade like I have a sensitive baby smooth. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it keep is. your girlish good looks going. Uh, well, I <laughs> girlish good looks. I, <laughs> it, I, nobody ever called me manly, especially not Dominique Foxworth, who never uh, never tweets me. Coming up, Kyrie is out for the season. What's next for the Celtics? And more importantly, what's it all going to mean for the Cavs? We will break that down. Stephen A. Smith Show, L. Duncan, Jason Fitz on ESPN Take Radio. Walk. I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I just need a little me time. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show. Triple eight, say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. I'm Jason Fitz, L. Duncan, sitting next to me. We're filling in for Stephen A. today and tomorrow. By the way, we do want to say hey, hi, oh. what's up to ESPN San Antonio twelve fifty. Coming in for the first time, hanging out with us. Uh, what don't a, worry. What a uh, letdown. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen A. will be here Monday, guys, but we're going to get you. Now, I will say this, El, and I don't know if we'll do this today or tomorrow, but I listen to a lot of Stephen A., of course, because yeah. he's Stephen A. 
And Stephen A. likes to, and I'm going to use air quotes you can't see on radio, he likes to sing sometimes when he comes back, and it's not the most pleasant thing. You happen to have a beautiful voice, so we might actually have to show Stephen A. a little bit how that's uh, how that's done at ah. some point. So I'm just saying. Will I'm just you throwing, air fiddle while I do it? I, I, will, I will air fiddle. Yeah, okay. that, nobody ever air fiddled and looked cool. Uh, but that, that, uh, I'm just saying, we, we got to find something we could show Stephen 100%. A. up on that. So uh, we'll try that. Stephen A. Smith's show is brought to you by Penzoa Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. And uh, I, I will say, if you're just tuning in, huge breaking news uh, we've gotten the clarity over the course of the uh, of the morning since we came to e- since we came to air, and the Celtics uh, another sort of devastating blow for Celtics fans for the Celtics team for Boston as Kyrie Irving is done for the year. So we were trying to figure out uh, exactly what it all meant. He is gone for the year. So uh, they will now be uh, they'll be one man short, uh, one man additionally short uh, for the duration, and it's been painful. Uh, to watch over the last couple of weeks, the Celtics in general, because frankly, you look at it every night and you just wonder how they're fielding a roster. Uh, the, the decimation of injury has been pretty staggering. Dude, they had to start a dude named Kadeem Allen. So, um, you know, I'm just saying. But listen, the positive side, though, to the Celtics and what they've been able to do, much like when the Warriors went to that little spurt where they had lost all of their you know, big names, all four of them at one point, right, and had to start playing some of these young guys, is that you've had an opportunity to see like Marcus Morris come alive right? 25 points off the bench the other night. Like, you've had a chance to see Terry Rozier have more shot attempts, something that he needed to work on. Defense was never an issue for him, but, you know, his ability to score was always an issue for him. So there's that for sure. But what's (laughs) the fallout starts? And so what would you say before the injury? Okay, Kyrie Kyrie Irving is going to be there. You have your full complement outside of Gordon Hayward, of course. What would you say those odds were for the Celtics just to 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 take the Eastern Conference? I'm terrible with odds. Tell me. Just okay, tell- so they were nine to two before. Okay, all right, second best. They're twenty to one now. Their odds to win the finals were twenty to one. They are now eighty to one, instantly. Uh. That that's that's painful. I mean, Eighty to one. By the way, uh, Woj just tweeted this: there will be surgery Saturday. Looks like he's going to need four to five months for recovery, uh, according to the Celtics. So. Uh, this is, this is, uh, it's a big deal. I mean, uh, you look at it now, you have to say, okay, four to five months from now, he's going to have to come into rehab. I know that you believe that the regular season of the NBA is completely irrelevant. Uh, and I, I mostly agree with you, but it does mean that they're going to have to now deal with getting two guys integrated at the beginning of next season that will be coming off of rehab and coming off of, uh, surgeries that are fairly epic uh, in the process of trying to figure out how the Celtics can build forward for whatever is next. It's, it's part of the crippling piece of this. Like Boston felt like they were on the verge of being able to do something special. And what we really wanted was some sort of a, a challenge in the East in the playoffs. I have a hard time seeing where we get that now. Exactly. And that's what all I was trying to say the last time that we were talking was I wasn't criticizing the Sixers or any of those things where you said, oh, well, without Embiid, there's this. And without... We're not expecting the East to be great. All anybody wanted was that the, for the Cavs to not steamroll everybody in the process to the finals. I always believed that the Cavs were still going to go to the NBA Finals, even with all of the issues that they had. But unlike years past, where maybe they lost one or two games in route to the Finals, I thought this would actually be competitive. I thought we could see someone push them to a Game 7 in one of these um, in one of these rounds, even if it wasn't just the Eastern Conference final. I think now, again, it's going to be a cakewalk for LeBron, but I think the result is the same. I think the Cavs were still always going to go because you like to bring up, in this case, I'm going to say that the regular season does matter because you keep throwing like the Sixers and whatnot. Cavs have won two of three versus the Sixers this year, and they've taken two of three versus the Raptors, who are supposed to be the best team. They've turned the corner. This is There's something feels different in the air in Toronto. I know they're not a good playoff team, but boy, this team feels different, and they've got the chutzpah, and they're going to do it this year. And the Cavs, despite all of their issues and inadequacies, have still steamrolled them in the regular season. Did you just go chutzpah? One hundred percent, I went That's Yiddish on you, dude. Spe- that is spectacular. Yiddish. L. Duncan never uh, never ceases <laughs> to surprise me. Stephen A. Smith show, Jason Fitz, L. Duncan. What do you guys think of the East? Triple A, triple eight. Say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Uh, does this make it a cakewalk for the Cavs? We always love your thoughts, and you can also uh, you can also tweet us at L Duncan ESPN at Jason Fitz. Be nice. Uh, uh, well, that never happens. Yeah, good uh, luck. Uh, and, and don't forget, guys. When's the last time you checked your credit scores? You know what they are now. Not from a year ago. If you go to Credit Karma, they're also offering free credit monitoring. Visit CreditKarma.com or download the app now. That's Credit Karma. 
dot com. And, you know, it's interesting to me. You get all flippant with the Raptors. We just presume that the Cavs are going to flip the switch, right? Because LeBron can flip the switch. So does that mean nobody else in the East is going to have a different level of urgency in the playoffs? I mean, isn't it at least possible? I mean, th- well, th- yeah, to quote KG, anything is possible, but they don't have the cachet. The point is, is that LeBron shows you time and time and time again. He's taken far less superior teams to, at the very least, the brink of an NBA you championship. Think far the less NBA superior? Fans. Yes. Far less superior? Years ago, his first go round with Cleveland when they lost to the Mavs, that team was trash. I'll give you that team was that trash. team was butt. I would argue that this team is almost as trashy. Okay. And he still caked walked through to, at the very least, the NBA Finals, and that's the point. Is that and that's that was LeBron seven eight years ago before he was he he's having his best season of his entire career with no one around him. But but at the same time, he cakewalked in the East, fine. But this is maybe at least in some ways a better East. I mean, we we are just accepting the fact that this is this is the the, the two truths we're aligning for the East. We align the truth that no matter what, the Cavs are going to turn on a switch. And we align the truth that no matter what, the Raptors are just going to stink. Because these are the two things we see every year in the playoffs. Sure. But just because it's always been that way doesn't mean that's what it's going to be moving forward. That's the piece of it. Like you you said that all the feels in the air. Toronto's never been, the, well, not I shouldn't say never. Toronto has not of recent been this good. They haven't been a one seed. The, 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 there is a little bit of a magic in the air for Toronto. Yeah, Why isn't that allowed? Because, we do, because this isn't the first time fits that in the regular season we've said this team has turned a corner right and this backcourt is incredible and blah 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 and under under the tutelage of this and that they're going to and then they disappear I mean it's the same thing that people keep ascribing with the Rockets like yes James Harden and the Rockets have the best chance to take down a Warriors team than anyone's had in years but with that being said you still have to remember their recent history it's like at the beginning of the NFL every year when we try to make some argument for why all of a sudden the AFC East is going to be like competitive no it isn't stop Stop it. We're just looking for reasons to think it's going to be competitive. We're looking for reasons to think that someone's going to contend with the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl, but they never do. So let's just stop. Like, it's a great narrative and storyline, but that's the stuff that you say in October of the NBA season, not four games before the playoffs. We know what time it is. And the, the thing is, I understand the lack of meaning to the NBA regular season, and I understand that it's difficult to keep guys engaged in a marathon. I understand all of those points, but I also do feel like you're not giving the East as a whole enough credit. The, I am. The, I just said that unlike years past, maybe the Cavs might actually lose some games in oh, route to the NBA Finals, that's, but that's, they're still going. The result will be the same. How they get there will be different. They will not just sweep everyone, Fitz. They won't have 26 days off in the next few months because they swept everyone in four. That probably will not happen, but to me, the end result is the same. Now, now I think it becomes markedly more easier because you have no Kyrie, because you have the Raptors playing their worst basketball of the season at the end of the season, and because you have no Joel Embiid. Now I think it will become more of a cakewalk for LeBron because they are playing their best basketball, or at least he is right now. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Triple eight, say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. We want to take your thoughts on what the East looks like now. Uh, do, do, do the Celtics have any chance? I mean, is there some way, somehow, some way that they can find a way considering you know what we've been trashing the 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 east as a whole but let's remember boston is the two seed like even even decimated you made the point earlier very intelligently they've played a lot of minutes this year without without Kyrie. so you know if you're if you're the celtics maybe the sky isn't falling maybe uh, maybe there is some reason uh some reason to hope i don't know espn radio presented by progressive insurance with insurance for cars home boat motorcycles rvs and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and at progressive.com i'm just not i'm uh, i'm not willing to say it's all all said and done there has to be some hope but mostly Ellen, it's because i've dug my heels in for 6 weeks this is, the, the, this, and uh, that's why where's the hope Fitz? yeah i, I you have keep none. saying some hope who's the some fit toronto the top seed in the east okay the top seed in the so East. It's going to be Cavs and Toronto in the Eastern Conference Finals, and you think that Toronto is going to get the better of LeBron? 
That's yes. what you're saying? Yes. That's what yeah, you think? I'm all, you know, this is, uh, okay. as, uh, we are both married in, individuals. As mm-hmm. married people, there are times in your life where you realize you've dug in too far in the argument. And now There's win, no lose, or draw, back. you're just going to stand on the edge There's of the no cliff and see uh, what and happens. I'm going to push you off it. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. We'll take your calls next. Uh, your thoughts on the East and what it looks like. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Your calls next on the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Hey. So Stephen, <laughs> L. Where Duncan is just... Go, z- yeah. Night and day. See? I prefer the Tina Turner oh version, my God. but whatever. Can I be... Well, no, I don't really want to be Ike, but I just want to do the little say, Ike please parts. Please don't be Ike. I don't want to be Ike. I just want to sing the Ike parts. Can I be very clear there? Yeah. Uh, so you're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Uh, that amazing voice next to me, L. Duncan. I'm Jason Fitz. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. ton of NBA talk uh, as the breaking news uh, this morning is uh, Kyrie Irving is out for the rest of the year. He will not see a basketball court through the duration of the regular season or the playoffs for the Celtics, another blow uh, for an already injured uh, team. So uh, we'll continue to get your thoughts in just a sec. Just remember, the NBA is on ESPN Radio. Tune in Saturday night. James Harden and the Rockets host Russell Westbrook and the Thunder, presented by Firestone Complete Auto Care. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Real fast before we get back to the huge breaking news. <laughs> Every- Are you looking like... Yeah. I just looked up at the no. Masters and I see people no. fleeing. A ball is obviously From going. Tiger, yeah. Listen, we just said oh. self. Listen, we just said self. Admittedly, like we're super casual fans, and we talked about how like Tiger's very first shot like went into the crowd. So I look up and Tiger is standing in the woods, right on his second shot. So his first shot must have gone to the woods. And then all of a sudden, I look up again and I see people running from the ball. I mean, this is about the worst start that Tiger could have had to the much-hyped return to Augusta National. I told everybody we were overhyping it. I'm just saying. That, that's amazing. Like uh, and it, it, Body language. We always read too much in the body language of mm-hmm. NBA players, for example. Body language is he was walking away. He was sort of flippantly spinning the club, and it sort of had the, well, it's not my day today, right. sort of. Doop, 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 doop. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I'd be angrier at that shot than Tiger was. So uh, there's a little bit of a... A disconnect there. Uh, so we're going to take your calls, 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776, uh, as we get your thoughts on what the East looks like. But first, we will go to Chris in Virginia, uh, who who has uh, something to say about a statement I made earlier. Chris, thanks for calling the show. What do you got? Hey, what's going on, guys? Just living the dream, buddy. Thanks for calling. Living the dream. I was flipping through the channels looking for, uh, try, hoping to find a, a master's update, and I heard, I just turned right to the channel, and I heard Elsa ask if she would, if you would air fiddle for her. And I, I immediately perked up. I was like, oh, awesome. They're talking about air fiddle. And then you said, nobody could look cool doing air fiddle. And I about died, man, because I karaoke. And uh, I karaoke Charlie Daniels, and I air fiddle. And I bring the house down, man. People love it. Chris, Chris, I gotta be. I'm here to be your buddy, right? Like I always say, when hey, you know, somebody's gotta be out. Like, like when a girl walks out with all of her friends and she's in a terrible outfit, I don't blame the girl. I blame her friends for right. not saying like, "What did you do?" I'm here to be your buddy. All right. Nobody looks cool air fiddling. You're bringing. They're not laughing with you, my friend. They're laughing at you at the air fiddle. I love me. I love me some Charlie. I've, I played with Charlie a bunch of times, but I have stood on stage playing the fiddle in front of a lot of people, and you look out in the crowd and you see the guy that's air fiddling back to you he never looks cool man i'm here to help chris chris i i actually asked fitz just now to show me what an air fiddle looks like and let's just say you'd need to listen to the after dark edition to hear what you can do i gotta go i gotta go lay into my friends for letting me get up there and do that keep keep doing the devil went down to georgia just uh just just uh dance during the the fiddle section instead of playing thanks for the call man we appreciate it i I love it like we're here to be friends like we're we're here to make everybody a little bit happier Uh, and i will uh, you know for anybody that doesn't know yeah i I spent years playing country music i played i toured with the band perry for a long time uh, as the fiddle player so i can make fun of air fiddling because uh, all Bruh, you always leave out like the best part. Yeah, whatever. Nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, touring with like a country superstar band. You went to Juilliard, son. 
Yeah, but Juilliard. that's not. There's that, no. There's that, no. I was a fat kid that played the violin that going to Juilliard. Dude, you went to Juilliard. It's that's way, amazing. It's way cooler to say. All you know, right. I played in front of a lot of people. Is it? Uh, yeah, and multi multi Grammy award nominated. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, we'll Brad. we'll go to the phones. Vern in Ohio. Thanks for calling Stephen A. Smith Show. Jason Fitz, L. Duncan. Uh, Vern, what do you got, man? Thanks for calling us. Hey, Ellen Fitz. Uh, hope all is well. Hi. Um, heard you guys talking about the uh, East situation, and um, I just wanted to say, you know, a handful of years ago, the Atlanta Hawks were like the second best team in the league, had the best defense, team basketball every, everywhere, and they were just looking fierce next to the Warriors. And when they came upon the Cavs, the Cavs took them behind the woodshed. Um, I, I just still feel like it's a fool's air and to count out LeBron and you know L you talked about that team of just scrubs he took to the finals back in 07 you had like Ira Newbel and Eric Snow just right. a bunch of nobody who? and yeah exactly who listen um, leg let the, me just tell you something Vern, um, thanks for the call man we appreciate I'm getting it. I'm getting some uh Vern yeah Vern 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 thanks for the call Vern um I'm having I was the Hawk sideline reporter that year when they were the number two team in the east no, you weren't really. Yeah. Oh. Ah, I mean, I'm from Atlanta. I worked for the Atlanta Hawks for seven years, right? And I remember it well. And we were so yoked. We thought like this could be it. This could be. This could be. Oh nope, nope. LeBron just LeBron all over us. And uh, and that was all she wrote. Wow. Okay. So that was the end of it. For you've the Hawks. seen it firsthand. Why can't it happen again? What? What are you? T- you just proved our point that no matter how good you think the number two seed is, the Cavs are going to come in and just. All over your dreams. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Coming up next, we're going to have Damian Woody join us. We'll get into a little bit of the NFL action. That's next up, Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. You can't hear this theme and not bob your head. L. Duncan, Jason Fitz. Sitting in for the man, the myth, the legend, Triple Eight, say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776 to get you updated. Tiger Woods is two over, uh, and he's 11 holes into his day. And it's been one of those, like, I've only played golf a few times in my life, but I learned quickly that if you aim for the cart path and you can hit the path, like, yeah. maybe you can get some extra roll out of it. feel like that's maybe the Tiger strategy as we see people uh ducking and uh, sort of it uh, looks like golf balls are just dive bombing people. Uh, he's shooting for the sidelines right now. Shooting for the sidelines. I know that's not the appropriate terminology. Yeah, I don't know um, like a lot about golf, but I'm pretty confident that you're supposed to aim for the flag and yeah. not aim for people's heads. That'd be ironic if you went for the flag and they're like, ah, <laughs> we're, di- we're different on this one. <laughs> oh no! Uh, you're welcome. Uh, and obviously, the big NBA news that we'll uh, we'll keep talking to you guys about all morning long. Kyrie Irving is out for the year. He will not return for the Celtics. He's out for the duration of the regular season. He's out for the playoffs. Surgery will require, according to Woj, about four to five months uh, for recovery. So, uh, you guys have uh, you guys have been hitting us on on the twitters about my my hot take that uh, I'm. I'm, I'm all, ba- I'm, I'm dug in on this, L. I know that I'm dug in on the Cavs not representing the East, but it's too late for me to turn my back. So I can only hope it happens because I will be like the MTV moon landing man. Like I will carry my flag everywhere on, I called the East if I can just get Yo, that hot take, hot tub is boiling. But, but you know right me, now, like dude. I am not a hot take artist, right? Like we can You're agree not, on that. Which is why I just cannot believe you are doubling, tripling and quadrupling down on Sometimes this. Sometimes you, you, you can be but wrong. But you know what? But you're not. But what you're also saying is things that are hyperbole because they can't happen. Like you're saying things like, well, uh, the Sixers with a healthy and beat. Well, he's not healthy. So you're really giving yourself a great out there because none of this can actually come to fruition because you're doing a lot of ifs and couldas and whists and shouldas. This is why Elle and I uh, could never we could never be married because she sees right through all of my transparent <laughs> arguing strategies. So let's get ready to have an argument on air that we've been having uh, all morning as we prepped for the show right. uh, before we were so rudely interrupted by injury updates. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. is somebody that you and I see differently. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I look at it. 
and I say you can't. Uh, in this conversation I've had with Jordan Rogers a couple of times on radio, there are certain positions and certain contributors that no matter how good they are, depending on the situation for your team, if you are looking to to wildly pay Odell Beckham Jr., I don't think you can unless you're a team that has a rookie quarterback contract where you have the space and the money, and you can say, you know what, we got we got a rookie uh, a rookie contract here. If you're uh, Houston and you've got Deshaun Watson coming back from injury, I'm not saying they need Odell Beckham Jr., but you're paying your rookie quarterback nothing. Then maybe it makes sense to go out and acquire a wide receiver that you're going to have to pay mountains of cash to. I have a hard time with the concept of the Giants being willing to pay Odell Beckham Jr. because no matter how great he is, I don't think he suddenly gets them to a Super Bowl and he takes up so much cap space, he can't do anything with it. He can't take them to a Super Bowl, no, in the same way that Antonio Brown can't take the Steelers to a Super Bowl single-handedly. But the point is he's the highest paid receiver because he's a transformative type of receiver. And so the Giants need their underperforming defense – that's got one of the highest payrolls in the league to step up. They need their offensive line to step up. They need a running game, which they have not had in many years. But yes, if you complement that and you pay OBJ what he has earned, he has outperformed his rookie contract. He makes more money being an Adidas athlete than he has in salary, period. He's one of the lowest paid receivers in the entire league. And I think that he deserves to be paid as much as a Mike Evans because he still took you to the playoffs Two years ago, before he got hurt, with essentially the same team. And the Giants will put themselves in a position to be able to draft a quarterback that they won't have to pay very much money to. So I don't think that the, I think the argument is a moot point. Yeah, but, but then at, at the same time, through that same argument, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. doesn't just want to be paid that way. He wants to be paid transcendent money. So you're telling me oh, that. Oh, he's uh, just talking. Or, or you give him all sorts of money and then he turns around and he's still not satisfied because it's not enough of the transcendent money that he wants. The league dictates that he'll make as much as his position requires he make and Antonio Brown is the highest paid receiver annually he makes 17 million a year he'll make more than that just like we see with quarterbacks over the quarterbacks are always going to be the highest paid position in the league and fittingly so and he will not get more money than a quarterback and him saying that is him just hyping himself up I think he just misspoke I think it was more I think I'm worth more than any other player because I think I am a generational type talent and he isn't wrong uh, no but where where I think you're wrong no offense I hate saying that to you no I'm wrong Uh, well now that you've admitted it uh, we'll move on no where I think you're wrong is that uh, NBA culture has seeped into the NFL and what I mean by that is this this uh, the control of your own destiny is something that NBA players have realized that they have they've come in and they've decided they wanted to demand trades no matter what they want to be able to dictate who they play with when they play how much they get paid to do it they dictate their own destiny and i think that 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 mindset is seeping into some of the 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 absolutely transcendent nfl players that are looking at it and saying hey if nba guys can do that why can't i do that and i think that odell beckham jr is falling in the lady on bell category where it doesn't matter what the league says i should be paid what i look at is i'm the best and if i'm the best I want the best money no matter my position. That mindset isn't something that's going to change. You can't watch all the guys, different sport or not, you can't watch the guys in other sports being paid at such an alarming rate and having so much control of how they're perceived, how their destiny is given to them, and and how they can move forward. You can't have that in one conversation and not have that seep over into the NFL. That's what's happening with Odell Beckham Jr. I don't think he misspoke. I think he and Le'Veon Bell are two examples of guys that say, I don't give a darn about what position I play. I want to be paid with the top 10 in the league. And you don't think that some of that is posturing? I mean, some of that is just a good business tactic. Like, if you want to make $18 million a year, you say you deserve to make 25. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, do I think that that's negotiation 101? Yes. Do I think it's posturing? No. Because I think that the players in the NFL particularly are figuring out, you know what? I have the leverage. It's the Kirk Cousins thing where you come in and say, hey, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to conform to what you think I should conform to. I'm going to change the norms and I'm going to create whatever I want my situation. And you know what? And there's nothing wrong with that because you can't tell me that OBJ hasn't proved more in his three or four seasons in the league than Jimmy Garoppolo did in six seasons to earn $25, $26 million. It's crazy. And so why not? So maybe they are. They're looking around and saying this is absolutely ridiculous. And we understand that the quarterback's always the highest paid position and probably always will be. But why? Why then, if we are not only a huge avenue, uh, uh, revenue maker, if we are the reason that people tune in, he's in a huge market. He's the face of a franchise and one of the bigger franchises in the entire NFL. Why not ask for what he feels like he deserves, whether he gets it or not? 
You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show. L. Duncan, Jason Fitz filling in for Stephen A. Triple eight, say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. You guys know the number. We're going to go to the Shell Penzo performance line. We'll get a little smarter on all things football as we are joined by Damian Woody. Damian, L. and I have spent the entire pre-show arguing over the future of Odell Beckham Jr. If you were a GM, would you pay him all kinds of cash? Um, I wouldn't because I don't believe in allocating that type of money into wide receivers. Um, so as great of a talent as Odell Beckham is, he's a generational type talent. I just think just me, if I'm putting on my GM hat, I just wouldn't invest that type of money into that position. Why I am doing Woody? so many victory he's doing, dances. I think he's doing a victory lap and a victory dance. Why, though? Why, Woody? I mean, listen, we have the same argument with running backs, right? Like, why would you pay Le'Veon Bell all that money when the running back position is not what it used to be, nor is it as important, when really the value in Le'Veon Bell is that he can run and also that he is a receiver. So where would you put that money if you're the Giants? You're not going to have to pay a quarterback really any money. When you first get him in the draft, not any significant amount of money, right? A rookie type of contract. Where would you put that money? You've already dumped it into a defensive line that's underperformed. Uh, listen, I'm just, I'm just saying that as far as paying Odell what, what he's talking about. Remember, Odell didn't talk about, you know, being the highest paid receiver. He's talking about being like the highest paid player in the game. Okay, now you're talking quarterback money. That's a big difference. I'm just saying that I wouldn't allocate that type of resources. Into the into a wide receiver. That's what I'm saying. Does Odell deserve to get paid? Absolutely. But I'm just not pouring that type of money into a wide receiver. I'm just not doing it. Damien, go, go ahead. I was going to say, oh, let's say, because listen, when I'm proven wrong about something, I fight that. I don't let it go, Woody. I just prove this. Thing. Uh, just, yeah. Listen, you, I was on the debate like team, wife. Woody. Exactly. I was on the debate team. Eventually, you're going to bend to my will. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's say then Odell, based on all the off-field stuff that happened this year and based on him coming back from the injury and all that, says, okay, let me take a couple steps back because let's be honest, you know football players get a little bit hype, Woody, and they start talking about what they deserve and what they earn. Let's say he was to come back to the Giants and go, all right, I want to be the highest paid receiver. Obviously, I'm not going to be the highest paid player in the game, but I want to be the highest paid receiver in the game. Do you pay him? Yeah, I will pay. I will pay Odell because I'm a believer in his talent. There's no question. You're talking about. I'm, you're talking about generational type talent. Even with him missing, you know, missing last year, pretty much. I mean, the guy's numbers has been just ridiculous. You know, on par with like a like a Randy Moss type, you know, type guy. So. Um. Yeah, I would pay. I would pay Odell uh, to be the highest paid wide receiver. I just wouldn't pay him to be the highest paid player in the league. Sure, Damian, I am watching you, Michael Jackson. This you are moonwalking this He's thing ma- back. Listen, that, that, He's that, married. Man, no, listen, that, exactly. Listen, Damian man, and I are married listen, men. That's We're what your I solution. do. That's yeah. why they call me the dancing bear. <laughs> I'm now going to replace you in all contacts as the Dancing Bears. Damian Woody joining us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. You mentioned the name Randy Moss. We'll use that as a trigger to get into the Patriots side of this. They get rid of Brandon Cooks in this trade. If you're Tom Brady, do you wake up uh, uh, not concerned about that, or do you wake up sort of frustrated that another weapon is gone? Well, I mean, this this isn't anything new for Brady. I mean, we've seen this throughout his career. He's seen this time and time again where they – you know, gone out and 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 let players go. You know, whether it's a, a you know trade you know trade a player, whether it's a Richard Seymour, or Mike Vrabel. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. He's seen this story, you know, before throughout his career. And I think Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks is a, is a really good player, but I don't know if he necessarily fits what the Patriots like to do offensively. He's not he's not the the, the typical receiver that the Patriots have on offense. Gronk is the the difference maker as far as the Patriots passing game is concerned. So the Patriots did what the Patriots do. They use the rest of the rest of the NFL as a farm system and they just keep getting, you know, acquiring picks. And that's how you keep costs down. And that's what the Patriots are doing. Here's the question though, what are they going to do with those picks? They have what, twenty two and thirty one? And me and Fitz were talking about this earlier as well. Like you can't it stands to reason you're not you can't package those to move up into the top six or seven. Take a quarterback if that's what you're looking to do, right? Which a lot no, of people listen, are expecting not, that they'll do. Listen, all, let me let me tell you something, L. Okay, they're not going to pack this nonsense that that's I don't know who's spreading it. This nonsense that they're going to package picks to go up and get a quarterback. That's a bu- that's a bunch of baloney. It's not happening. The nonsense that you know that they'll package picks to go get Odell Beckham. That's not going to happen. If anything, they'll take the they'll move they'll trade back. The Patriots have been known to trade back more than more so than anything else. 
So I think they'll keep the picks, but they might trade back and acquire more picks. Because, again, when you're in a salary cap era, the way you keep costs down is you got to get these rookies, these draft picks. That's how the Patriots have, have been basically above, you know, cut above everybody else because they know how to maneuver the salary cap better than anyone. So all that being said, let's look at the other side of the trade then, Damian. The Rams get Brandon Cooks. At this point, they're obviously all in. What do you think is a reasonable expectation for the Rams this year? Um, to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Do I think they're the favorites? No. I still want to give the Philadelphia Eagles the benefit of the doubt, but I think the Rams are right there with the, the Saints and, you know, the Minnesota Vikings. Listen, this thing is bigger than, you know, we, we've kind of been touching on the surface of, you know, the trade of, of Brandon Cooks and being all in. But you got to also think, this is we're talking about the L.A. market. And when you're talking about the L.A. market, think of the, what the Rams are competing, um, competing against. They're competing against – the USC Trojans, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Anaheim Angels, the Los Angeles Dodgers. So they're competing for for people to, you know, become fans. They got a new stadium coming in 2020. So with all those things being said, they're trying to create a bigger footprint in the Los Angeles market. So this is good business for the L.A. Rams right now. And listen, maybe the offense was like, yo, the defense is making so many moves. We got to do like a little bit something on this. <laughs> like, can someone talk about this side? Very quickly, before we let you go, Woody, I'm going to challenge you to use one word to describe your thoughts when you heard that a man by the name of Robert Griffin III, who didn't play in the NFL last season and has a total QBR of 32.9 since the start of 2014, was good enough to get signed by the Ravens on a one-year deal as a backup. One word. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's spectacular. Yes. That is my the, man. Well, well played by you. Uh, Damian Woody, you can follow him on Twitter at Damian Woody. Although, my friend, I think you should change that to the dancing bear. The dancing bear. If that doesn't happen today, then I don't know that I love, uh, I, I can't handle it. Thanks for the time, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, guys. Bye, Woody. Fant- Bye. Fantastic stuff from Damian. Always great. Uh, dancing bear, though. I really do want to just find him in the halls today. And just walk up and see, like, you know, if I just go two arms around it, can, can, can I hug the dancing bear? Maybe yeah, get a dude, slow dance? He's an old lineman, son. Think, like, he's got, he's light on his feet. He's agile for a big man. And Woody's been putting in that work at the gym, too. So, like, Woody's pretty svelte now. Hello. I have two. I have you? God, this is what happens. Okay, so Damien did make a great point. You're listening, by the way, to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. L. Duncan, Jason Fitz, uh, sitting in for Stephen A. Triple Eight, say ESPN phone number. You guys can chime in. Uh, and, and a really strong point that he just made there, L, to me, is the LA market. I think we've sort of forgotten that in this piece. I think that there has to be some realization. Whenever you're moving to a new city, whenever you've got a new franchise, when you're building a new stadium, uh, there are certain times in your franchise process that you have to worry about star power. And I, I believe that L.A. particularly, we talked so much during the football season last year about the lack of attendance and the lack of, let's say, interest in spike uh, or, or sort of heat around the Chargers and the Rams. Well, how do you create that other than winning? Because the Rams did the winning part. How do you create right. that other than winning? You win, uh, you win at the higher level and you also bring in more stars. That's what the Rams have done. The Rams have made themselves a conversation piece for the entirety of the offseason. In L.A., I think particularly, that's important. You have to remind people that you are there throughout the offseason. You can't just sort of ask people to tune back in in August like you can in other football markets. I mean, I would still say I don't I don't think that Brandon Cooks moves the dial. I mean, if you know NFL... I think, no, I think Brandon Cooks... Move, well, uh-huh. listen, I think what moves the dial is that the, you made a trade with the Patriots. But outside of that, like, I don't think you're average, unaffected. Because let's be honest... People give Atlanta a lot of crap for not being like a town that's very interested in sports. But there's two places where the game atmosphere remind me of each other. L.A. and Atlanta. What they both have in common is they're both entertainment cities, right? They're both entertainment cities that are filled with transplants. And while L.A. has a history of winning more, you know, they've got these kind of they've got these these programs, whether it be in college or they've got these professional teams um, who have been around a lot longer and have more of a history of winning and being in the conversation I just don't think that a Brandon Cooks moves the dial. I don't think anybody cares. I mean, the Rams have this young, handsome Ryan Gosling looking quarterback who went from, who went from, you know, horse manure to sugar and like all this. And they still couldn't put anybody in the stands. You know, they still couldn't. They had Phillip Rivers and a Hall of Fame quarterback and they still couldn't put anyone in the stands. So I don't think, and they're kind of unaffected. Lakers games aren't lit. 
there's no home court advantage. Like no one, it does, no one perceives it that way. But yes, in terms of football nerds like me, it's a huge deal. I, I think more so than just the the name, it's also about it, it's also a little bit about sort of the fact that it's a headline, that it becomes a headline on ESPN, that it becomes a headline on on dot com, that it becomes sort of uh, the big the big conversation piece. I think that's a part of it that matters too, more so than the brand himself or Brandon Cooks. Although I, I, you know, I think the Brandon Cooks has been in the news enough that maybe it's a little more of a story than, than you think it is. But I will say to casual NFL person, what's significant is you tune in everywhere and it's like, Oh my God, mega trade. They're covering the press conference today all over the place. And it's like, Oh wow, this is huge. Right. That's the piece of it that I think sort of has to happen at some point. And it, there are layers and pieces to this, but the reminder that a stadium is going to be built, it, it won't be done until 2020. So they're going to have to find a way to remain relevant conversationally, not just on the field, but conversationally all the way up through 2020. That's a, that's easier said than done in the process of, of what the NFL looks like. It's such a year to year league. I think the Rams have put a ton of pressure on themselves to win right now, but they've also given themselves a lot of faces for the billboards and that matters in that town. Sure. No, that's good. I mean, I'm like, yeah, agree. I listen, I Elbow can't disagree with you. With hey, yeah, I agree. That's fantastic. That's I got per- no fight left. That's because you're progressive. ESPN Radio <laughs> presented by Progressive Insurance. Commercial insurance through Progressive protects your business and your dream. Choose from over 30 coverage options at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Uh, getting a little Twitter hate, by the way, on our take earlier that it wasn't a great start for Tiger uh, because uh, apparently nobody is starting well. Uh, so the, 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 tw- the Twitter the world, leaderboard? the Twitter world does not like our assertion that being two over after eleven uh, was was less than a. Listen, I don't care. Li- listen, Twitter world, this angry, angry golf stand. I'm laughing at the mere fact that again, I don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to this. But every time I look up at the TV, Tiger's in the woods, and I don't think you have to know anything about golf to know if you're putting from outside the rope, okay, and you're hitting fans. That's probably not the start you envision. He's now three over. So you okay, guys tell me so when I can panic. Yeah. I, when is like, when is con- what's considered good? Cause I thought three over was terrible. I thought the whole point was that there's a minus before the number. Can we all agree? If you were playing Tiger Woods golf on your video game console of choice and you were three over, that's when you accidentally unplugged the whole thing, which by the way, doesn't, <laughs> I, I was playing Madden and I got really frustrated. I was having a bad day and I had just gotten the brand new Madden, got a new Xbox and like hooked it all up in my apartment, like sitting on the floor. Floor, like a college child playing Madden. I threw five interceptions in the first half, and I'm a very good, like, I've made money playing Madden. I threw five interceptions on the first half, Ooh. and in a mo- moment of anger, I was, I, I, I may have shut the, the unit off, and I turned it back on. It picks you right back up in the it same does. place. You can't even do that can't anymore. Like, that's, I can't, I, I can't. I can't escape that. Uh, th- that's that's where we are in the world. Uh, Jeff Goodman going to join us at 2.30. We'll get his thoughts on Kyrie Irving. That's coming up uh, next on, on the Stephen A. Smith Show as we will continue to break down all of the big, big, big news uh, in the NBA with Kyrie Irving out four to five months. Uh, he's gone uh, for the rest of the season and the rest of the playoffs. Guys, when's the last time you checked your credit score? Know what they are now, not from a year ago. With Credit Karma, learn what affects your scores and what you can do to improve them. Maybe you need to dispute an error on your credit report. Or maybe you're paying too much interest. Credit Karma can help with all of that. Is there unclaimed money in your name? That's right. That's a real thing. You can use Credit Karma to check. Once you know where you stand, Credit Karma helps you figure out your next move. They even offer free credit monitoring. You just need to visit CreditKarma.com or download the app right now. That's Credit Karma. Dot com. Brian! I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. L. Duncan, Jason Fitz sitting in for Stephen A. Smith, which is a mighty, mighty big shoes. To f- I feel like a big boy sitting in the big boy chair today for Stephen hey. A. Triple eight, say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Uh, we'll get to the breaking news in just a minute on Kyrie Irving. Uh, obviously, if you haven't heard yet this morning, he is undergoing surgery on Saturday. He will miss four to five months. So he is, he's gone. But I do need to remind you before we get there, 
that the John R. Wooden's Men, Men's Player of the Year Award, presented by Wendy's, my favorite, is the most prestigious individual honor in college basketball, awarded to the country's most outstanding player, who's also making progress towards earning a degree. DeAndre Aiden from Arizona, Marvin Bagley the third from Duke, Jalen Brunson of Villanova, Devontae Graham of Kansas, and Trey Young of Oklahoma. We get to see who will take home the award. To do that, you just need to tune in to the College Basketball Awards show Friday, April 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on ESPN2. Brought to you by Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2018 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. And Wendy's, by the way, L, is an American treasure. Yeah. And every time I read one of these ads, I put on weight because I told you I was in the gym. I will crave a junior bacon cheeseburger, which is the perfect ratio from Wendy's of meat to bun. I will crave that for the rest of the day until I go get one, uh, as well as a Frosty. And don't you dare tell me Frosties are available in anything other than chocolate. That's the way God intended them, them to be eaten. I feel like the only way to eat a Frosty is to dip the fries in the Frosty. No. Yes. No. no, that's a huge thing. Why, no, fries yes, are delicious on their own. Frosties are, are delicious but the, on but the But own. the combination of the frosty and the fry Who is fantastic. You? What are you talking Who about? Who are you? I didn't say any other milkshake. Specifically, a Wendy's Frosty with their French fries dipped together is creative you, food genius. You just said frosty and milkshake in the same sentence, which means you don't know your fast food. That's what food. I just said. A regular oh milkshake God. is a reg milkshake, and I wouldn't normally dip fries in them, but you specifically even, you, with Wendy's, it's a thing. I dude. don't even know why we're still talking. We'll go to Jeff Goodman on the Shell Penzo performance line. Jeff, uh, frosties, do you dip the french fry in them, or do you just eat them as the American treasure they are? Answer this carefully, Jeff. Yeah, I just eat them as is. They're good I knew enough. I liked you. Like, you don't need to dip them. Come See, on. I knew I liked Jeff. Uh, so we'll ask you a serious basketball on, question. <laughs> uh, she, you know what? It's okay. It's she's, all good, Jeff. she's been a little off all day. That's what that's what hosting <laughs> with me does. Uh, wait, wait, a little just today. I was going to say Jeff Goodman <laughs> knows me well. He knows that I pretty that's much right. come like this. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, so we wanted to bring you on because obviously the the breaking news today: Kyrie Irving uh, going to miss four to five months. Really, at this point, what's the mindset around the Celtics for? Sort of, sort of what they expect at this point moving forward in the playoffs? Uh, I think they'd be happy to get through uh, one round of the playoffs, get get a victory in, in the first round, depending on who they play. And um, You know, listen, Terry Rozier's been great. And, and they've got Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown, uh, obviously Al Horford, Marcus Morris. They've got enough to win a round, but uh, then I think it would be difficult to ask them to go much further than that. Uh, so I think, you know, this is certainly something where, you know, if, if you had said that, that Gordon Hayward would miss the entire season this year and the Celtics would have been the number two seed in, in the playoffs, uh, you would have taken that. They would have signed up for it in a heartbeat. Uh, but now, certainly without Kyrie, you've got to manage the expectations now. And I think uh, the, the organization understands that. Uh, to go deep in the playoffs this year without those two would be would be a difficult task. Thank you, Jeff Goodman. We were kind of talking about this in one of the commercial breaks in that, like, yeah, it's devastating for Kyrie because you hate this. And he did put on Instagram, you know, the hardest thing to do sometimes is accept the uncontrollable things in life and blah, 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 blah. Um, but this team was really playing with house money anyway, because while it was at the very beginning right. of the season, the first five minutes of the season, any hopes or chances of a title Felt like they went out the window when Gordon Hayward got hurt, and they've just superseded every expectation by what they've been able to do in the meantime. So this doesn't really feel like a lost season so much as one that had got people a little more hype than they anticipated and now has been fully realized as a bust. Yeah, the, the biggest loss, I think, really for the Celtics this season, in addition, obviously, the injury to Hayward, was the fact that they could have had the, the Lakers pick uh, if it fell between two to five this year. And now the odds are, are minimal. I don't know what the percentage is. They would get it if they're two or three. If the Lakers somehow, if that pick ends up being uh, in the lottery, ends up being two to three, which is a, probably a 1% chance or something like that or 2%. Uh, but, but that would have been the big thing for the Celtics. Now they're going to have to wait two years and they get Sacramento's pick in a draft that's far weaker. But, but ultimately the biggest concern here, guys, is Kyrie's knee. And, like, is it – I had somebody close to Kyrie tell me he, he's got old man needs. And is this something that plagues him the rest of his career? You know, we think Gordon Hayward will be, certainly be close to 100% at some point next year. But does Kyrie have these type of knee injuries uh, for the rest of his career? And if he does, obviously you got a decision to make in a couple of years when, when he's up uh, for the Celtics. And, and what you do with him, obviously, you, you want to keep him and build this core 
of Kyrie, uh, Hayward, Tatum, Jalen Brown, and then the Sacramento pick. And you look at down the road, if Kyrie is healthy and Hayward's healthy, three years down the road, this could be the best uh, team in the NBA when Golden State starts to get a little bit older. We're talking to Jeff Goodman on the Shell Penzo Performance Line, Stephen A. Smith Show, L. Duncan, Jason Fitz filling in for Stephen A., uh, you mentioned three years from now. Could you make the argument that because the Celtics do have so much draft equity, equity in the next few years that they can sort of handle Kyrie a little differently than other teams could? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, again, listen, you got to make sure you're, you're, he's healthy. Uh, that's, that's the biggest thing right now. But um, what they've got at their disposal right now is, is a terrific young core. Kyrie's young. We forget how young – I think he's like 25 or something like that right now. Uh, so, and Jalen Brown and Tatum are young and only going to get better. I said it before he played his first game this year, and and people were like looking at me crazy here in Boston, but I said Jason Tatum's going to have a better career than Paul Pierce. Wow. And I, I believe that 100%. I believed it before he ever played a game. I mean, I've seen this kid play since he was a sophomore in high school. Uh, I just think his growth is, is already – his maturity – uh, his skill set, his work ethic, everything about him screams uh, to me a Hall of Fame player at the end of the day. So when you put all these guys out there together with Gordon Hayward, who makes everything easier for everybody else, and he's the perfect uh, mm-hmm. you know, Robin to, to Kyrie's Batman at the end of the day because Gordon Hayward doesn't care about being the guy. And you throw all these guys out there, and the one guy that's going to be interesting is Horford as he gets older, what they do there, but... Um, this, this could be the team to beat if they stay healthy or if they get healthy in a couple of years. For now, they're not the team to beat, as we talked to Jeff Goodman here on the phone with us, NBA Insider. No, so, Jeff, we have like a minute and a half for you to tell me, because yeah. me and Fitz disagree, shockingly, and what this means for the Cavs. I said all along, I felt like, even with a healthy Kyrie Irving, that this was still going to be the Cavs to lose in the East. Um, he seems to think that it was going to be much more competitive with the Raptors and the Celtics. What do you think this means for the Cavs? Yeah, I'm, I'm all in on the Cavs, turning it on when they need to. You know, ultimately, that's what LeBron does. You see him really not guard a whole lot in the regular season, and then he steps it up when it matters in the playoffs. He paces himself. Uh, I think the Cavs, uh, again, I think the Celtics now become like everybody else, and, and they can lose to a Washington, Milwaukee, Miami, whoever they face. And I think it's Cavs, Toronto at the end of the day. And as much as I love DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, uh, I, I like LeBron and Kevin Love better. That's that's fair, Jeff, and, and I'm not going to take anything away from that. You mm-hmm. you are much smarter than I am, but I will say this. As much as we argue that this team for the Cavs, uh, top to bottom, may be, and they're not as bad as the one that uh, that we all remember for LeBron sort of willing to the finals years ago, they may not be that bad. Is the rest of the East better than that situation was at the time, though? I mean, it doesn't it feel like there's at least more around the East that could contend? Yeah, the only thing I'll say is the Cavs' second best player back then was Mo Williams. Thank okay. you. Uh, That's now fair. now Thank it's you. Kevin Love. I mean, who who do you want? Mo Williams or Kevin Love? I'll take Kevin Love. And and they still got enough guys who have won. I mean, that's the other part. You know, Tristan Thompson is a winning basketball player. You brought on some young legs with Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. Uh, they'll be fine. They're going to turn it on. I think they win the East. And then unless something crazy happens, they lose in the, in the NBA Finals again and again. Jeff, we started out the conversation getting along on Frosties, and now uh, we we end. And then he turned in the group with But me. You, you can still follow him at Goodman ESPN. Always great stuff. ESPN Basketball Insider Jeff Goodman. Thanks for the time, man. We appreciate you. Thanks, Hefe. You got it. Take care, guys. He Bye. Was, he was so right with the the Frosties, and so so wrong with oh. the, with the frosty I think cold he take. Wrong in the and east. got right. See the frosty cold take in the oh, east. God. You see what I did there? You don't even kid, and you got dead. That, jokes oh on my deck. god! That that is that's one of my great skills. Like I have dogs; those count, right? Well, yeah, okay. sure. So uh, ultimately, I think he he raises Jeff raises a really good point about what uh, what the future of Kyrie is. That's part of what we haven't even talked about. We're so worried about the future of the Celtics. There is a moment, uh, it, it made my eyebrows raise when he said someone close to Kyrie says he has old man knees. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's you could go back a, a year and rewind and, and think about what that trade looked like when you've got Kyrie for IT and, you know, all the conversation about it. And now it looks like you've got damaged goods for possibly damaged goods. 
it, it's it's a weird situation to think that Kyrie might already have an issue that puts him on the decline. At the same time, we've been saying this about Steph Curry his entire career. He came into the league with bum ankles and bum, bum lower extremities. And while it is obviously rearing its ugly head right now, he's found a way to power through. Um, so, again, we'll see. Because his leg, his knee injuries haven't been as consistent as Steph Curry. So um, until he, we have a Brandon Roy situation where he has degenerative knees and it's a situation where it's like no amount of surgeries can help this, I still believe he'll be fine. Well, and I don't think that we can take anything away from the fact that the Celtics are stacked in the draft for the next several years and they're young. I mean, right. so you talk about a team and this is what we forget now because the conversation before the season started was that the Celtics were built to win now and then also to win in the future. Well, win now hasn't happened for them, won't happen for them in our minds because of the injuries. That's something they can't affect. But they have already affected their future and put themselves in a situation where it allows them to sort of look at this year and say, ah, it didn't work out, but there is always next year. That's a, a dangerous thing to say in sports particularly, but the way the Celtics are, are, are built, I think it's a fair thing to 100%. say. 100%. They're so young. They don't need to win now. So you right now you want to make your Celtics, buddy, Celtics fan buddies feel better about a, a, a rough day. What you should do is surprise them with the bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. When you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you get another dozen absolutely free. Just go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. And, L, you can go out there and get me a couple dozen roses later for kicking my butt all Aww. stinking day long. When we come back, the way you consume sports may have changed forever based on something that started <laughs> yesterday. We'll tell you what it is, and we'll have yet another argument about what it means. That's next up, the Stephen A. Smith Show, L. Duncan. And Jason fits in for Stephen A. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! It's the Stephen A. Smith Show. L. Duncan, Jason Fitz. We're in for Stephen A. There's two of us, L. Duncan and Jason Fitz. We're not one. One person. By the way, yeah. uh, you can check L out all the time on Sports Center. Uh, mm-hmm. You are basically just uh, the beast of Sports Center. Oh, you're, thank you're you. All uh, everywhere, all the time. Friday through Sunday. Uh, you can check me out uh, on ESPN Radio. Yep. Um Monday through Friday, six to nine with Sarah Spain, Spain and Fitz, and also you can see both of us uh, hanging out uh, as hosts of the. I'm gonna humble Go ahead, brag say it, it. Say it. Say it. The newly Emmy nominated Sports yeah. Center on Snapchat. Hey. And if you if you're not familiar with Snapchat, uh, basically you go to the Discover page in Snapchat, and you'll see all sorts of different uh, companies have like newspapers and things like that. They'll have their news, and we have a Sports Center uh, icon that you can see, and you click on it, and it brings up an episode that's basically four or five, six minutes long, and it walks you through everything that's happened. And yeah. two episodes launch in uh, every day: one at five a.m., one at five p.m. Uh, so it's a way to get you caught up on everything in a very quick compartmentalized uh, way. And, and frankly, humble brag, we, we get about a couple million viewers, uh, per episode, yeah. uh, that go up. So it's a, a new way to consume sports media. Right. That's important to this conversation because yesterday, uh, something else happened. Uh, yesterday, the Mets and Phillies played the first of 25 games on Facebook Live. Now, the uh, viewing numbers looked like they were in the 70K range at any given time. Uh, but the way to watch this game was to go out on Facebook Live and consume it. And in my mind, El, the, the way we consume sports is going in this direction. This was a huge step towards what I think is part of the future. Okay. And in my mind, mm-hmm. um, I don't like the option, the only op- option being I have to watch it on Facebook. That's just me. Like, I think that Sports Center on Snapchat, it has its own identity. And I think that's what's amazing about it is that, but is, it is in conjunction to and specific to the platform. So if you still want to see a more in depth type of Sports Center, you've got that ability to do it on linear television. And if this was in conjunction to being able to watch this on your regional sports network or on television, cool. But if you're at the house and you want to watch the game on the, on the big screen, you don't, you can't. And that's what I don't like about some of these is that you have no other option but to stream these. And I would, if he's given the choice, I'd like to watch it on my TV. Call me, get off your lawn guy. Okay. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, you know that I am, I like to call it notoriously frugal. All right. Some people around me might call it cheap. cheap. Right. So my, my wife and I, you know, we're living in two different cities as we figure out this transition in Bristol. And uh, we have a, 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 a carrier for our TV mm-hmm. that has I can watch online. So rather than have TV at my apartment, that seems like a terrible waste of money. I just go on and I online access our account. 
and then you have a little HDMI cable that comes out the side of your TV, sure. bam, you plug it in. So I'm watching regular TV on my regular TV. It just happens to be streaming sure. from my internet. Uh, th- th- that's the future. You can plug in if you need your big, you know, 752-inch Amel Duncan TV to watch your sports on. You can still plug into the HDMI yeah, cable. Yeah, I and know, do it. but then fits. But then, like, I have to like flip between HDMI one and HDMI two when it goes to commercial break, and I want to see what else is on, and that's just too much of a okay. hassle. And I don't want a- to do anything or a pop up comes on and then all of a sudden in your screen you see like a bouncing iTunes icon. I don't like any of that stuff. If I have to leave the house, I love the option of having the game on Facebook to take with me. Do you bedazzle your walker when you're like old lady? Do you just like do you bedazzle it as you I sort of walk through? I mean, and I get what you're saying. Like, it's funny. I went home for the weekend uh, recently and I sat down and my wife handed me the remote control and I was like, oh my God. I didn't realize how much I miss having a remote control because yeah. when you're connected through the laptop, you got to get up. Or, or you know, today the, the kids today with the Apple TVs and the things like that. You know, they <laughs> the kids today. God, do we? Sound I, but old. this is this is where it's going. And and I'm just saying, if you gave me an option where I could watch my beloved Raiders uh, beat your your beloved Broncos uh, via an app that I could take with me everywhere and I could plug into whatever I want, I would do it all day every day. You can. It's called the Sunday Ticket, oh, and you wow. can watch it wherever you go because that's what I do. But again, not cheap. if you're frugal cheap and you don't want to spend the money to watch your horse manure team consistently get beat funny that your team actually has a horse logo correct Uh, we will be back tomorrow again we want to say thanks to san antonio uh for joining us espn san antonio Uh, just picking it up Stephen a will be back on monday l and i will be back tomorrow where we will continue the conversation uh obviously it will keep you updated on all the big news Uh, thanks for hanging out with us today and uh hope you'll hang out with us again tomorrow thanks for listening to the Stephen a smith show on espn RG3 gets his second chance. Johnny Menzel's fighting for his second chance. And Colin Kaepernick's, well, I don't think that's coming. Straight ahead after Stephen A. It's the Will Cain Show on ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.